A few days ago, NVIDIA decided to make a pretty awesome move and publish its closed source driver or module for the Linux kernel to make it open source. I have it opened up right in front of me, the project for the GPU kernel modules that is now open source and currently using an MIT license. Now this is unprecedented for NVIDIA since they typically keep their drivers locked up for no one to see and is one of the main reasons NVIDIA graphics cards have remained unsupported by open source and lacking in Linux distributions. So this was released to us in some news from the NVIDIA on a blog post here on May 11th. It says NVIDIA releases open source GPU kernel modules and we'll talk about this blog post some more and talk about this good news, which will help driver developers, what used to be proprietary drivers and use those as a reference to develop and improve their own drivers, such as Nuvo, the open source driver, which already exists and has always lacked in the NVIDIA department. And that's because up until now, it hasn't had any other drivers to reference. Unlike AMD, which has for years, about a decade, published its Linux drivers for the world to see. Here mentioned in the blog post, NVIDIA is now publishing its Linux GPU kernel modules as open source with dual GPL MIT licensing, starting with the R515 driver release. You can find the open source code for these kernels on the GitHub page, and I showed you that a moment ago. We'll check it out a little more in depth, but let's talk about what this means. Since AMD has open sourced their kernel drivers for the past decade, the development for Linux open source AMD graphics drivers is way further and more advanced than the NVIDIA drivers. This allows you to basically run AMD graphics cards across most Linux distributions without having to install anything because the driver just comes directly with the modern kernel. With this new development from NVIDIA, we'll finally see some catching up from the open source NVIDIA drivers and hopefully new graphics cards will be supported by the kernel in the future without being forced to install proprietary software. Meaning you can pretty much run a completely free and open source system now that NVIDIA has finally done this. A big driver here, it even says, for data center GPUs and NVIDIA Turing and NVIDIA Amper architecture families, this code is production ready. So what's been happening lately is data centers with GPUs have been pretty much getting stomped on by AMD. And a main reason for this is a lot of servers will run Linux. So with Linux, it made a lot of sense with the wonderful AMD support for the latest and greatest AMD graphics cards in Linux that they were stomping the performance of NVIDIA. So this is NVIDIA's way of catching up, I bet, with their newer family of architecture so that they can compete in the production space with AMD. So now NVIDIA and AMD can compete better, at least on the server side of space. I'm super glad that it's finally pushed them over the edge in order to open source these kernel drivers but there are downfalls to this. Not everything's great with this, but there are downfalls to this because since they're so focused on setting these environments up with things such as the support for servers, that means that we are going to lack in other areas. So to the downfalls, one is going to be that the only thing currently open sourced from NVIDIA is the kernel drivers themselves and not user space software or firmware. So this means the software that typically users use in order to interact with graphics cards from NVIDIA, those programs are not available and we cannot see how they function. So hopefully in the future that also comes out if they really want to keep in fierce competition with AMD. We already have those two for AMD. Another problem here or downfall is that this only supports graphics cards with Turing architecture or better. Basically anything without the Turing architecture or newer will not work with the current open source kernel driver that they've given us. So that means older graphics cards will likely not be supported and you're going to have to upgrade to something with one of these newer architectures. A lot of us still run old architecture graphics cards. And if you're ready to learn more about Linux today, make sure to check out my Linux checklist and cheat sheet at learn.savvynick.com. I'll post a link in the description below. The third and final thing is it's going to take time. So communities like the new Vo community that already has open source drivers will have to go look through these now released 
kernel drivers from NVIDIA and figure out how to optimize their own drivers and then supply it to us. This is going to take a lot of time to develop. They're well behind the curve here when in comparison to AMD. So don't go out there buying yourself an NVIDIA card thinking that you'll be able to use these drivers anytime soon. Let's look at this installation opt-in section. The R515 release contains pre-compiled versions of both the closed source driver and the open source kernel modules. These versions are mutually exclusive and you can make the choice at install time. The default option ensures that silent installs pick both optimal path for NVIDIA Volta and older GPUs compared to NVIDIA Turing Plus GPUs. You can build the kernel modules from source and then it shows you how to install with a little graphic here with either the opt-in install command or the default install command, which gets you either the closed source modules again or the new open source kernel modules. Notice it says Turing Plus GPUs. So unless you have a Turing Plus GPU, it's pointless to run these drivers and install them on your computer. Notice the M kernel open option here is what actually installs these open source newly available kernel drivers. Let's now go take a look at what's going on with development on GitHub. All right, here on the GitHub page, we can check out issues and see what's going on here. Looks like we're having quite a few reported and open and some work actually being done with 32 closed, 58 currently open. And we have things such as segmentation faults happening, people thinking NVIDIA for doing this, installation failures, and people trying to make documentation for the open source drivers. Let's see what kind of things people have been working on from the beginning. It looks like they've been fixing typos, making documentation. Here, someone's improved grammatical accuracy in the code, making things more uniform. And it looks like quite a few cosmetic changes, but also some porting has been going on. Here's to a risk V system, trying to make things more efficient. This is great to already see people devoting their time to open source. Our best bet here is that the Nouveau driver community takes this kernel driver release from NVIDIA and starts making changes to their own drivers, optimizing what already exists in their own open source driver and bringing to us better system kernel modules with the new NVIDIA architectures. I'm pretty excited about this. I know a lot of the Linux community is as well. Let me know what your thoughts are below. Let's hope for firmware and user software, open source code as well. I think they're gonna have to do it if they're going to try competing against AMD in the server space. But anyways, this is a great step forwards for the Linux community since so many people use NVIDIA graphics cards. We hopefully in the coming years will phase out proprietary drivers completely out of Linux, replacing it with a proper Linux module or driver and we can all finally rejoice. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.